Ready, set, get wet with Simi and Courtney and the rain here. Welcome to Get Wet. Officially, without doubt, the world's wettest game show. So wet, in fact, wetter than a tadpole tail. And in tadpole terms, that's pretty wet. Go and sort the first game out. OK. And we'll kick off the action in just a second. But first of all, just come up here and have a look at this. If you've seen the show before, you'll know exactly what this is all about. A real-life shipwreck that hides a very valuable secret. Because somewhere concealed on this wreck is today's star prize, the Big Kahuna. Now, only one of our teams will get to search for that prize. All the way through the show, they build up points. The team with the most points gets to search for the star prize, both up here on the deck and also scuba diving down there amongst the wreckage on the seabed. So let's meet the teams playing Get Wet today. First of all, the green team, Jenny and Robert, the Carlisle Crocodiles. And the orange team are Isabel and Paul, the Invalith Invaders. Probably the last time you'll see them dry, because we're going to start the action now with the Big Splash. Big Splash is the first of three games for the team to start picking up the points to leave those big prizes, and hopefully a place in the chest quest at the end. But first of all, the teams have to come down this chute here and swim over to the valve, turning the wheel which operates the water cannon at the other side of the pool. And you'll realise why these things are so much fun in just a second. But before they can get their hands on these, a few more problems down at that end. Then the teams have to get up this very slippery slope, but they won't have a rope to help them. All the while they're collecting doubloons. The bronze are worth five points and the silver are worth ten. <laughs> the further on they get, the more tricky these things are to get hold of. Absolutely. Look at those two silver doubloons at the end of the balance bar. So, on the balance bar, the very slippery goes. Right to the end. Jumping onto these huge wonder wheels, working your way across the pool, picking up the dreams for the pontoon where Sim is. Once they get up here, they'll find this little beauty, and their grins will get even broader because this is worth 20 points. Having got the 20 point doubloon, they're then free to have as much fun as they like with the water cannon, blasting the opposition and making life very difficult for them. Now we have 100 points available to each team in this game and only two minutes to collect them all. So if our teams are standing by, let's make some noise, give them a huge send off as we say, ready, set, get ready! Our teams have to do is open those valves. I can see one, I can see two. The water cannons are up and running. And it's the orange team first over there. I think that's Paul first up up the slippery ramp. And being the honest gentleman he is, he's helping Isabella behind him. It's a team effort to get up those ramps. Now, this is where the fun starts. <laughs> hey! Paul straight off the slippery balance bar there. Whoa! <laughs> and so is Jenny. And Robert doesn't even try for it. He just doesn't even want to go there. Now, the next thing they've got to do is get in these inflatable wonder wheels and collect as many points as they can at the surface of the water. At the moment, neither team is making a run for that pontoon. Of course, the first on the pontoon has the advantage because they can get on that water cannon and make life tricky for the opposition. And I think it's going to be it's going to be Paul. It is Paul for the invaders. Is the first onto the pontoon. Grab your grab your doubloon there, Paul. He's, I think he's forgotten all about it. There, he's got his 20 points. That's the main thing. And now here we have Jenny. Jenny's there. <laughs> Blasting. Poor old Isabel. I'm a mouthful of water, she says. Now, I can still see some doubloons out there. <laughs> and only two guys left in the water to collect as many points as they can. <laughs> I, I can't help laughing because Paul has turned his water cannon into a nice, delicate spray. <laughs> He's providing a refreshing drink for the opposition more than anything else. <laughs> That's it, the time's running out. Time up! <laughs> Madness. A brilliant first round, though. 
I think it could go anyway. There are points still in the water. Let's find out the scores. Well, Sim, the Carlisle Crocodiles have 70 points, but the Inverleaf Invaders have 100 points. Well, I've got to <laughs> congratulate you guys on a maximum. Presumably, you must be feeling quite confident now, are you? Yeah, but yeah, it still good. could all go wrong. You're That's absolutely true. right there, Paul, because it could go so wrong. It could still swing either way. Uh, let's find out the prizes you can win on today's Get Wet. Level 1, 75 points. Take your favourite sounds for a walk with this dinky personal stereo. Level 2, 100 points. Stow away all your swimming gear in this superb sports bag. Level 3, 125 points. Be centre court every time with this sensational tennis set. Level 4, 150 points. You just can't get wet with the super cool all-weather jackets. Blazing a trail into that prize pile. But of course, they're competing to play the chess quest later, aren't they? Yes, but only one team gets to do that, so it's all to play for. And more points to be gained now as we play Brainwave. <laughs> it's a really easy competition. Basically, it's true or false. Elaine and I have three statements each, all about the world of sports. Now, the problem is some of them are true, some of them we've just made up, haven't we? We have, yes. Every correct guess by our teams is worth five points, so they can potentially earn 15 points here. They've elected a spokesperson for each team. It is the girls, so we've got Jenny and Isabel, and the orange team, the invaders, are in the lead. So, you'll go first. Elaine has your three statements. The Fosbury flop occurred during the 1968 Olympics when Dick Fosbury accidentally fell into the swimming pool. Two are false. False. It is, because Dick Fosbury was a high jumper who first went over the bar backwards. The only British medal won in the 1998 Winter Olympics was in the four-man bobsleigh event. True or false? False. It was true, I'm afraid. In track and field, the decathlon consists of ten disciplines. True or false? True. It is. Well done. Two out of three, not yep. bad. Snooker player Steve Davis has won five world championships. True or false? Got her in. True. It was worth a guess, but I'm afraid it was false. He's actually won six. Between 1977 and 1987, American hurdler Ed Moses was undefeated in 107 consecutive meets. True or false? True. It is true. Good guess. And finally, the original name for the Commonwealth Games was the Empire Games. False. What do you think? False. It's true, I'm afraid. Only the one out of the three. Let's check out those scores, voiceover man. Well, Sim, the Crocodiles have 75 points, but in the lead, the Invaders with 110. <laughs> It's quite a lead, but it could still shift, couldn't it? Absolutely. A few more games left to go. I'm going off to get the next one ready. OK. Let's get our contestants back in the water, because I don't know about you, I'm feeling a bit peckish. Why don't we dip for donuts? In Dunking for Donuts, we have the girls on a floating yellow pad. The boys will be using their muscle power to push them around the pool while they try and pick up as many donuts as they can with their lance. The winning team is the team with the most donuts back on their blue floating pad. There's just one minute to play this game, and for every five donuts collected, another five points is notched up on the scoreboard. Ready, set, get wet! <laughs> Excellent effort, though, by both of our teams. We're going to count up how many rings they got back. And look at the scores. 
Well, Sim, the Crocodiles now have 85 points, and the Invaders still in the lead with 115. So, both teams have the dinky personal stereo. The Invaders also have that super sports bag. Still to play for, then, that sensational tennis set and the super cool all-weather jackets. Well, there we go. It's a profitable day for both the teams already. Yes, but there's still the star prize to search for on the shipwreck, but only one team gets forward for that. That's right. That's the chess quest at the end of the show. But now, of course, time to alter the points slightly as we go into round two of Brainwaves. <laughs> It's basically a true or false quiz like earlier, except we have sat the guys here, Paul and Robert, back to back. Because as we ask them these true or false questions, they're all about a watery theme, as ever in this particular round. And today's watery theme is ships. As we ask them the six questions, they indicate their answer, not by shouting out true or false, but by lighting the appropriate light. Red for false, green for true. So, eyes down, let's play some brainwaves. HMS Ark Royal is an aircraft carrier. True or false? The answer is true. The bounty, as in mutiny on the bounty, was commanded by William Bly. True or false? It's true. Difference of opinion all the way down the line so far. When the Titanic sank, she was heading for Australia. True or false? They've both seen the film. It is false. <laughs> she was heading for New York. The Lusitania was torpedoed by a German submarine in May 1915. True or false? It's true. A boat has been defined as a vessel capable of being carried aboard a ship. True or false? It is true. <laughs> the Queen Mary was launched in 1934 by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. True or false? It's false, it was Her Majesty Queen Mary, funnily enough. Well, they couldn't agree on much, and some of those <laughs> questions were really difficult. Still, a bit of guesswork was involved. Let's see how the scores look. Well, Sim, here's how it is. The Crocodiles have 95 points, but still in the lead, the Invaders with 130! So, it is a big lead, but we've seen it beaten before, haven't we? Yes, we have, and there's still one last game to play. That's right. Let's put our teams on the ropes. In this game, there are four ropes, two on either platform. All the teams have to do is thread the rope through the rings using the yellow rope as their guide. Each successfully threaded rope is worth 10 points, so a possible 40 to be gained by each team here. We play this game one team at a time, and as the invaders are in the lead, they'll go first. They have a minute and a half to set a score for the crocodiles to beat. Ready, set, get wet! <laughs> Look at that start. Phenomenal start by Paul there for the Invaders. This is one of those games that looks easier than it actually is. As you can see, as the rope gets into the water, it gets very heavy. So Isabel's doing the right thing by yanking it off the platform and helping him feed it through. <laughs> Even though she did just get a face full of water there. Thanks for that, Paul. Very nice. OK, Paul's got one rope through. He's hooked it on. Now, grab another rope, Isabel. Go on, go for it. That's ten points in the bag. There's a bit of faffing around going on this end here. What's all that about? Come on, Isabel. The hoops have got a little bit jiggled up in the middle. They're starting to get a bit of a tangle. Paul's doing his stuff, though. He's feeding the rope through. That's the right thing to do, helping out Isabel so he doesn't get too knocked it up back at this end. Isabel's at the other platform. I'd say that was a safe 20 points. What's Paul doing? Come on, mate. <laughs> Paul, come on, get around on the road. Keep going. Isabel's just going, oh, I'll carry on this one, she's saying. No, oh, Paul's just remembered he shouldn't be allowed to be slipping up to the other end now. <laughs> I've never done that before. I've never done that before, have you? The amazing thing is, when we pull this out of the water, it'll be a hanging basket, which will be nice. <laughs> That's it! Time is up. There's rope all over the place. It's a tangled mess down there, but we'll sort it out and see how the crocodiles do when they're on the ropes. Ready, set, get wet! Come on, you can't help feeling for them. They've got about 
place but before we check the scores out in case you were wondering here's the proof of how tricky it is when you're on the ropes yeah. I have to say that is a tricky little game and it has left us with a final score well Sim the crocodiles have 105 points but this week's chess questers are the invaders with 150 <laughs> to say commiserations to the Carlisle Crocodiles. Have you enjoyed your day, Jenny? Yeah. And what about you, Robert? Had a good time? Yeah. You've been fantastic contestants, and the good news is you have won prizes. Oh, yes. Yes, you've won a personal stereo each and a hold all each. Well done. Good effort. I think <laughs> the only thing left for you guys to do is swim for home. Yep. Let's hear it, please, for Jenny and Robert, the Carlisle Crocodile. Hey! Away you go. It's time for the Invalid Invaders. Step this way and go with Elaine because you are going to get kitted up. Off you go in all your scuba gear and your helmet because the action really begins as we play the chest quest. It's everybody's favourite part of the show, but before I explain how the quest works, just prepare to be gobsmacked by today's star prize. It's all downhill from here when you hit the slopes on this fabulous Alpine Team Ski Activity Holiday. A skiing holiday for each of our contestants. Both Isabel and Paul could be going skiing if they can open this baby. This is what the chest quest is all about. To win that prize, they have to open this. Of course, as you can see, it's at the moment chained securely shut and locked with two sturdy padlocks. What they have to do is find the two keys that open this chest. Let me tell you how it works. I shall give both Paul and Isabel the first key on their quest. And in Isabel's case, as she's on the deck, that will bring her up here to this chest. When she opens it, she could find well, a whole array of items, but she's looking for something perhaps like this, a mallet. Now, that would bring her down here, where she would use the mallet to perhaps smash these things. <laughs> where inside she would find the next key on her quest. And so it continues. And all the while, down below, Paul will have his scuba gear on, taking on a whole different set of underwater challenges. In fact, at the moment, Paul is just getting his kit on, and our safety divers are in position underneath the surface of the water just to make sure everything goes OK, because scuba diving can be risky, but we've got all that covered. Now, every time we play the quest, we give the contestants a different set of challenges. So let's look at today's route. Isabel's first key will, of course, open the treasure chest, then across to the captain's cabin to burst those bladders, back across the foredeck to smash open the barrels, then down to the main deck to flood the water floats, up to the poop deck next to solve the padlock puzzler, where she'll find a golden key. Meanwhile, down below, Paul must open the sunken chest, then across to lift that rudder, next up to loosen the pipe, and then over to crack the sphere, where he'll find his golden key. All that in just three minutes. Well, the guys are ready. It's time to show your support for Paul and Isabel, the Invalith Invaders! <laughs> so, 
Here it is. You're all geared up. You're all psyched up for this. Have you seen the prize? You've got a skiing holiday at stake here. How do you feel? Brilliant. Yeah. You, are you confident? Yeah, I'm just going to have a good time. Good for you. Good for you. Well, the way it works is this. I shall give both of you the first key on the quest. So, Isabel, that key Thank opens you. the first chest. Right. After that, it's up to you. You've got three minutes. Just go like the wind. And we're all behind you. There goes Elaine. Now, the same applies to you, Paul. This is your first key. That will open the first chest. After that, it's up to you. You've got three minutes to complete the quest. Let's give them a huge send-off as we start the chest quest in five, four, three, two, one, go! Isabel, come on, turn round. That was a tremendous performance. You raced, you really raced. Listen, the lid didn't open. You just two, three seconds too late to get the key in there and turned around. But you did do brilliantly. Hey, listen, you've won a fist load of prizes and you've had a great day. <laughs> Let me just remind you that you've won a personal stereo, you've won a hold door, you've won the tennis set, you've won the funky jacket. Have you enjoyed yourselves? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Well, you've been brilliant contestants and we'll be back with more Get Wet very soon. See you then. Bye!